Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Mission Impossible 2 Movie Thoughts. This one takes the mask element of the first movie and just goes nuts with it. There are far too many demaskings in this movie and really hardly any of them excuse me need to be there. Let's look at when Ambrose pretends to be Hunt, the not the first time in the plane, which, you know, yeah, I'll get to that scene. Let's talk about when he, you know, tricks Naya with it. How did he know that Hunt would be the thief, the agent that she had come into contact with? Isn't that a bit of a gamble on his part? You know, what if she had just said, who are you? I have no idea who you are. You are not the agent that I had. Yeah, really, think about it. How did he know? Is Hunt the only IMF agent? Did they just really want an agent that looked like Ambrose? It just, yeah, I... I fail to follow his logic there, other than that, you know, I don't know, maybe he was so self-aware that he knew what franchise he was part of. I really dislike how they turned Hunt into such a just risk-taking dumbass. You know, in the first one, he was a badass. He, you know, the risks he took, and they were definitely risks, he took in order to you know, get the things done that he needed done. He was in an impossible situation, and the one way he could think of getting out of it was to take these, you know, huge risks, and they pay off. And in this, he just takes risks because someone who watched the first movie thought that that was, you know, his defining character trait, that he just always takes risks, you know. Again, missing that, you know, when we first see, you know, let's talk about the introductions of, you know, Hunt in the first and the second movie. In the first movie, he's on a mission and he's not really taking a risk. He, he's not taking a risk, he's being a good agent. He's, you know, getting the job done. And, yeah, it just sets up this guy's a spy and he knows what he's doing and he can go undercover and this world has face masks that are, you know, really you know, convincing. This movie, this guy, you know, he vacations by risking his life on a, you know, climbing a cliffside. I'm not saying that that itself is just something, you know, bad. I'm just saying it's a misunderstanding of the Hunt character. You know, he's not just taking risks for, I don't know, the Hunt in the first movie, I see him more as spending time with that family that they threatened in the first movie, or, you know, just some, doing something that has nothing to do with spy work and taking risks. It just, it didn't seem to me like that was something he just got his jollies from. It seemed like something he was willing to do and you know, trained to do if the need arose. Returning to the masks, when Hunt poses as Stamp, Stamp, I think that was his name, the right hand man with the missing pinky, and you know, he he's put a mask of himself onto the real stamp. This whole... Let's just say that, you know, Ambrose is actually stupid enough to not, you know, when, when he sees the pinky with the thing on, he doesn't yell to anybody, that's not really stamp, you know, towards the fake stamp, or the fake shimp. 
let's just say that he, you know, takes his sweet time pulling off the mask. Does absolutely no one in the entire room, which, you know, lest we forget, actually does have several goons armed with guns, who know Stamp and who know Ambrose, do none of them react when Stamp just waltzes up to both the antidote and the, you know, to the, the two vials of the antidote, I guess. Stick them, shove them in under his, you know, into this coat pocket and, you know, leave the room. Does, does no one react? It makes no sense. And it doesn't even, you know, this is one of the situations that I was talking about in the review. Why don't they just send an armed team? I really don't see... It's a bunker! How are they gonna get out of there? If you just... Heck, bomb it! You don't even need the Black Ops troops. Well, okay, let's say they're not gonna bomb it because they want, you know, plausible denial. They want to be able to say nothing actually happened here, which makes... That is re just preposterous compared to the rest of the film, you know, with the amount of stuff. Again, not talk about what Ambrose does, because, he, you know, he doesn't care. And why should he? You know, whatever. He's no longer working for the IMF. But Hunt is, you know, just blowing stuff up all over the place. With all the explosions that he causes in that bunker, would it really have been such a stretch to just send a Black Ops team? You know, okay, they're the IMF, they're the CIA. Maybe they prefer the silent, stealthy option, but... Do they not have access to just entire teams that they could just dispatch with, you know, people, you know, just going in with submachine guns, assault rifles, and taking, you know, the whole place out? You know, what, are we supposed to care about the, the biocyte leader, you know, who outright, you know, said that, you know, he really does not care if people die... He just wants to get paid. You know, I guess it was really lucky that during his confession, he spoke his full name. You know, I guess Hunt was really banking on that for, you know, needing the recording, for getting into the biocyte chamber and destroying all the, you know, chimera. Yeah, that whole situation, you know, why not just deal with it like that? What exactly do, you know, even if they do need the vials of the antidote, they could still have a team of guys just go into what is, you know, is Hunt being the only person to go in there going to keep the vials safe somehow? You know, it's not like Ambrose doesn't need them too. He's, you know, trying to make money off them. So... Yeah, you know, one thing I do kind of like about this movie, William Maypother as one of the bad guys, you know. Poor Tom Cruise's less handsome cousin. I believe that's the relation, cousin. He, I've never seen him play anything other than a villain. But man, is he good at it. He is just so creepy. That is one good aspect. And where, just... Suddenly, there are two men on motorcycles. I suspect these are Ambrose's men, but where are they coming from? Who called them? Did Ambrose, you know, pick up a walkie-talkie in an unseen shot and yell, you know, send in the two guys on, you know, singular, you know, on the colored motorcycles? You know, even so, why only two? What? What is the... just... It was so clearly just so that they, you know, the next scene needed two motorcycles. And preferably, you know, they should have very different colors so that we're never unsure who is on which bike, you know. And Tom Cruise dons the sunglasses because he's an action hero. And the action, hero, the action heroes wear sunglasses, so... These people really do not behave as spies. How about when... 
you know, an example of Ambrose not at all beha behaving like a spy, or like the human being with two brain cells. Hunt doesn't know that he's coming. I'm pretty sure Ambrose knows this. How does he proceed? Does he send in snipers? Does he have people target Hunt? And, you know, make sure that they shoot him before, you know, giving him a chance to be able to fight back. Since he's got his back turned, he's clearly otherwise occupied, you know, he's stuck in flashback world. Un, you know, incapable of destroying that last, you know, injector gun, because the, we, you know, we know that this movie needs more running time and action scenes. No, he does not. He does send all of his goons to just fire towards him with automatic weapons. Has he not watched a single John Woo movie? I guess Hollywood action movies in general. Weapons do not hit the lead character. It's just, it's that, that's a fact. But, you know, if he had at least used a sniper, heck, it could even have been a, a nice tense scene, you know, hearkening back to the first one. We could have had snipers lining up the shot and then he catches, Hunt catches a reflection. You know, he's, there's glass all around him. There could be a reflection, there's some light or something, you know. And he ducks just in the last second, you know, something like that. But no, he, he one of the goons even slides across the floor because he's in a John Woo movie. There's no other reason. He's, you know, we don't know for sure if that guy is an ex-spy, but if I was an ex-spy and one of my goons had a preference for sliding across the floor when firing at a spy, a top-trained spy, I'd tell him to knock it off. Because it's really not helping matters. And just the, you know, hunts... I gotta say, Tom Cruise pulls off the Kung Fu pretty well, but it just really doesn't fit his character or the whole overall spy motif. Not saying that, you know, spies don't use martial arts and such, but... Again, compared to the first movie, in the first movie it seemed more like... When they physically engage with someone, you know, similar to the Bourne movies, they're going for the kill. You know, they're trying to end it immediately, you know. In this, excuse me, he's beating people up, you know. He's showing off. There are several of the moves that would attract far more attention than there's any reason to, you know. You know, for example, when he's breaking into the bunker. Let's talk about how they completely mess up the... They just had to get the iconic scene of Tom Cruise suspended just above a floor, you know, in this, into this movie as well. And they utterly botch it. You know, they completely miss the point of the first movies, you know, of that scene. In the first movie, he has to remain suspended above the ground. He has to not make any sounds. He has to not sweat, you know, both for it running down the, you know, glasses and because his body temperature has to remain, you know, at about the normal level. You know, if it rises too much, it's gonna set off the alarm and the whole thing is gonna be botched. In the second movie, frankly, if he had raised an alarm, if something had happened, I imagine he would have been fine. He would have shot himself out of the situation. Even if he doesn't want to kill the guards, he could just, you know, just pull a Terminator 2 on them and just shoot them in the kneecaps or something. And that would be that, you know. Or he could have brought tranquilizers. I guess this world doesn't have those for spies. And, in fact, that, that whole, you know, the whole point of we have to sneak into this building 
is rendered completely moot when, you know, Ambrose and gang actually do just show up and start shooting up the place, you know, and Hunt shoots back, you know, again, how is this going to be explained, you know, is, th yeah. The, but, but yeah, so in this one we have him just plummeting towards the, the floor there and, you know, somehow that one guard doesn't see him even though at one point he appears to be looking in a direction where he really spot him, but yeah, he doesn't spot him and we have, you know, ooh, the ticking clock and, you know, the, the, line has to leave the room as well before they close and yeah and then you know we even have to have Luther's van blow up just yeah and he spots it because of the mirror and the reflective surface of the water <sighs> yeah and then we have the John. John. We get it. You like, you know, having violence and something symbolizing peace and just the, the purity in nature in the same scene. You did it really well in Face Off. I haven't watched your Chinese movies yet, so I, I can't say for sure if you did it in those two. Here it just doesn't work. It it just it does not work. It it looks ridiculous. One of the doves flies through an explosion. Or through the fire at least. It's just it's distracting. You know, it doesn't feel organic or symbolic. It just feels like a hippie got into the CGI you know studio for half a day and they didn't have time to remove you know, the damage she did to the print or something. It just... Yeah. And then we have the jousting on the motorcycles. You know, as if it wasn't dumb enough. And just big action movie-ish enough. And yeah, you know, some of the spy elements actually do kind of work, you know. Tom Cruise and Thandie Newton meeting at the racetrack and, you know, the, you know, Billy handing her the, the little brochure kind of thing with the earpiece in it, you know, and that whole thing. It does kind of work, although, you know, Billy slowing down Stamp by slamming the door on his hand or him, whatever. It seems a bit much, a bit like it 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 attract attention, you know, where, you know, in the first movie something, something similar would be, you know, that whatever it is exactly that they put in that guy's coffee to make him throw up all over over and over. You know, that was a bit crude as well, but it didn't attract as much attention, you know, so people get sick. But doors slamming onto, you know, why didn't Stamp just say, well, I gotta go to the bathroom. Goon number one, follow her. That would have blown it right there, you know. It's just, yeah, and the whole thing with, you know, let's not even get into how the, this villain using a, what's it called, cigar cutter to, you know, cut off fingers. That was already done in Darkman. And in that movie, it was actually effective. You know, here it's just John Woo watched Darkman and he liked the idea, so he just copied it. You know, there's nothing interesting to this. It's... and, and he's... Ambrose is such a boring villain. What what is he even? He, okay, okay. So he's greedy. He wants to have sex with Thandie Newton, and he doesn't care if he kills a lot of people. And 
that's about it, you know, so, okay, that's, that, that's the big villain, that's, you know, his motivation is greed, you know, part of the reason we're supposed to hate him is that he wants to have sex with Fanny Newton, and she would rather have sex with Tom Cruise, and, yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> look, yeah, it sucks that sometimes spies have to have sex with people they really don't want to, but it kind of goes with the territory. I really don't know what she thought she was getting into, or what Tom thought he was getting her into, but yeah, that kind of does go with, you know, I don't know, maybe he thought that she was just, she would just be dangling above something, or blowing stuff up, or shooting people, but yeah, sometimes that's, you know, kind of part of it. And yeah, once they've actually spotted him, again, why not send in just a team to, you know, clear the building? They know where he is. It, I'm, is something gonna... Heck, they can, you know, if they try to monitor the you know, the virus or the antidote or whatever, they could ensure that he doesn't, that it's not, you know, used. Excuse me. And again, let's get back to how much of a moron Ambrose is. <sighs> Since he, you know, he pretends to be the, you know, he pretends to be Ethan. And, you know, so presumably he's seen the video, or he's at least been told you know, this guy has to be at his destination within 20 hours. And that's important. And there's a virus involved. I'm sorry, do you not stop and think he must have contracted the virus then? That's, that's like logic. It's not even, you know, some kind of it's, you know, it's, it's, it's simple logic, is what I'm trying to say. 20 hours, there's a virus involved, put two and two together, dude, is, yeah, you know, how is this guy a spy, if he's such a big moron? Yeah. Was that all of the points? I suppose that pretty well covers it. I could spend a while on the stupidity of Tom being able to use his bike as a shield and dodge bullets just by riding a bike and, you know, all these kinds of things. But again, you know, it's just... The film gives up on trying to be realistic after a while. And again, this is just too bad because the first one, most of the way, it's quite credible and realistic. And I suppose you can't entirely try to apply real life physics to a John Woo action movie. And you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't be able to. But yeah, you know. You want a good John Woo action film in English where the emotional core is not only actually present, but very effective. Just watch Face Off. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.